Hello and welcome to God Center. Today we will be discussing uh, a follow-up on the topic of workplace woes and we'll also be following that up with discernment. All right, so let's jump in. All right. So as you remember the last video, if you uh, did watch that, if you didn't, I encourage you to go ahead and check that out. So you're going to be happy that you did. Okay, we talked about some of the issues that go on in the workplace. Well, I wanted to continue that discussion um, and ask the question, have you ever been lied on at your job? I don't know that there's any worse feeling uh, professionally uh, than being lied lied on okay um i believed for a time I, I after high school i went into working in in retail sales and saw a lot of different things and it just really strengthened my resolve to say i need to go to college because i'm not about having people talk to me like they're crazy so off to college i went and i obtained my degrees and I give God the glory for it. And I perceive that in doing so, I would not have to deal with some of the things, some of the issues that I dealt with, with entry level jobs, certainly in retail. So I'm, I'm thinking, this is great. I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm ready for these new levels. There is a saying that you may or may not have heard. And the saying is, new levels, new devils. Ha! Huh. I cannot begin to tell you the truth in that sentence, okay? Who's not ready for new levels? I mean, new levels, let's go. I'm, 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 I'm ready for it, I'm here for it, let's go. But are we really ready? Are we really ready to get to those next levels? What awaits us at those next levels? I want to share with you an experience that I had on one assignment that I was working and an individual had basically decided that for whatever reason they don't like me whether I come in there and I'm just dressed to New York you know friend nanny you know the friend they don't like the, the the I'm extra because yes I am extra so but anyway that side note so nevertheless they don't like me so this individual sets out to begin to lie on me. And I didn't know this, but I walk into this meeting and I'm thinking it's just a meeting, you know, a typical meeting that you just you come in with your little notepad and you're going to say maybe there's going to be a change in uh, the SOPs or standard operating procedures at this particular place. And so I'm ready for it. I'm just ready to, to write these, you know, just to apprise myself of what's happening. And then I begin to hear lies, lies being spewed out of this individual's mouth. And you know, your flesh starts to, your flesh is not dead. Just because you're saved, sanctified, hallelujah, filled with the Holy Spirit, your flesh is still alive. My flesh is, and so is yours. And when you hear somebody lie on you, your heart starts racing because you, you're just in disbelief. There's, there's fight or flight. You go into either fight mode or you go into flight mode. I'm a fighter, so I'm, I'm ready for fight mode. Uh, so I'm about to go ahead, get my scrunchie out, wrap up this hair in a ponytail tight bun and get the aqua four out because I graduated from Vaseline back in the day. So we we gonna we gonna go there if that's what you want to do. But God, hallelujah, for the Holy Spirit that resides within me and help to keep me calm. So even though my flesh wants to come out and be Micah Tyson on this person, hallelujah, the Lord allowed me to sit myself still and not be troubled in my spirit, but just hear the lie out. And as I'm hearing the lies, the Holy Spirit is telling me examples or he's reminding me of situation that I can, I can use to refute what this person is saying. So basically 
The Holy Spirit is my, he's like my internal attorney. And he's saying to me, hey, Ramon, say this. He's actually giving me utterance, hallelujah, to tell what to, what to say next. Because if we're not careful, we want to say the wrong thing and just come completely out of character. And we are trying to be, after all, professional because we have degrees now. But we still flesh and we're still bones. We, 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 we still people. Okay. So nevertheless, I thank God for these situations, actually, because it has drawn me closer to the Holy Spirit. And if you are in tune with the Holy Spirit, if you are, if you have that Holy Spirit hookup, he will hook you up and he will help you to know what to say to shut those demons up at your job. The Bible says that Satan is an accuser of the brethren. Satan is the father of lies. So it should not surprise us when people want to lie on us because we know who, what spirit is behind that. It's a demonic spirit. And if you're walking in Christ, it shouldn't surprise you that you're lied on. If they lied on Jesus, they'll lie on us. It shouldn't surprise us, but we need to be ready. And we ready ourselves by developing a closer relationship with the Holy Spirit who resides in us. And he will speak to us and calm our spirits, even to the degree we'll right now where I've, I've had this well, I haven't had many situations like this, thankfully, but I've had I've had enough. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Uh, and I'm at a place right now where the last situation I encountered, the Holy Spirit allowed me to sit there and smile. And I didn't feel the same heart racing flesh, fight or flight, ready to become Micah Tyson again. I didn't feel that. I didn't, I didn't feel that whole, I didn't, I didn't have to experience that. I just sat there in confidence, knowing that I know who walks with me and I know who resides within me and whatever the devil means for my evil, God will turn it around for my good and for his glory. Okay. So on to discernment. We want to move on because I don't want to make the video too long, but this is super important. So if it goes over a little bit, guys, you, you, you need to hear this. Discernment is a gift of the Holy Spirit. It gives you the ability to discern or to tell the difference between good and evil. It can be used to discern or to, yes, basically to discern characters in, on your job or in your life. And specifically it can help to discern people who proclaim to be Christians on your job. So why is this even important? So, you know, on the job, I'll tell you my situation or that I've gone through. So on the job, listening to some low volume Christian gospel music and here comes Sarah and Sarah says hey I like that song are you Christian and I say yes why yes I am and she's like I'm Christian too and it's like what like okay what church you go to and it's like oh I go here and it's like you feel you, you, you start getting excited. You want to do lunch together. You want to bond together. You feel like, man, there's another soldier up in here for the Lord. You feeling like a thundercat. You feeling like Voltron transforming. Y'all going to connect because what, what the word said, wherever two or more are gathered in his name. So y'all just, you all going to get together and y'all going to break down all the shackles in the job, in the workplace together. At least that's that's how excited I get when I hear some uh, that I got another Christian, another believer in the, in the building, in the, in the place. So you're not alone. You're not out here by yourself. But the word of God says, test every spirit. So now with this new friend, you're sharing, you find yourself sharing personal information, 
perhaps even maybe your thoughts about management on your job, and you have not even saw or seen any fruit in this person. Uh, the, the, knowing the, a gospel song is not, it's not, it's not fruit. It's not. So the fruit that we should be looking for in this individual can be found in Galatians 5. So I encourage you to go ahead and have a look at it. I'll try to put it on the screen, uh, the fruit that we should be seeing in an individual before we make that individual our confidant. So you start passing by this, this friend's desk now at work and you notice they have Harry Potter books and they got a couple of Harry Potter figurines on their desk. Um, well, Harry Potter is about sorcery. And they say, oh, I'm just a fan. You can't be a fan of Jesus and a fan of the devil. The Bible says, what manner, what, what, what business? Let me read it specifically what it says so I, I, I get it exactly. As it. In 2 Corinthians 6.14, it says, what communion does the light have with darkness? Another translation says, or what fellowship does light have with darkness? Meaning, if you have Christ in you, Harry Potter should piss you off. And it should piss you off because somehow this book has made its way into Christian households. And you have parents that are reading Harry Potter, Christian parents that are reading Harry Potter to their children as bedtime stories. This is sorcery. Galatians 5 says this is sorcery. So am I saying that because someone, your coworker or your friend has a Harry Potter book that they are a bad person or that they are not a Christian? No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, no, it's not good. Maybe just they maybe they just love a good read and that's what's captivating them, but they're failing to see what this is real, what really this is. Okay. Um, it's, it, and, and as I said, we're not about judging and so forth, but this is just simply to drive the point home that we need to use discernment as we pick our confidants, who we choose to confide in is so important because it can affect your life in major ways, ways that you did not anticipate. And in our next video, we will touch on that. Uh, we will be taking uh, you to a story in the Bible and that will be in our next video. But this is it for this segment of God Center. Uh, thank you so much again for tuning in and we'll see you next time. But until then, be sure to keep God at the center of all you do. Bye-bye.